Well, where have y'all been the last eight weeks? <laughs> wow. It feels good to be home. It feels good to be home. <laughs> uh, I want to say, uh, <clears throat> first of all, um, on, on behalf of all the prayers that uh, uh, we've received, I want, I want you to know that when I was in the hospital, um, you, your prayers were present before me. I felt them. <clears throat> it, would be, it would be kind of strange because all of a sudden the room would fill up. And it would be because the presence of God's Spirit was unleashed. And I could feel your prayers. And they brought comfort and peace to me. Um, this journey that I've been on the last eight weeks has been um, if I can't put it into words, you know it's difficult, right? <laughs> Shingles to upper respiratory infection to bronchitis to <coughs> oops congestive heart failure and <coughs> we can't do anything about it and yeah we can and no we can't and <coughs> uh, I've got a persistent cough right now so I apologize for that but that's just the way it is right now. <clears throat> In the midst of uh, everything that goes on, you try to you try to make sense out of what God's doing. You been there? You try to make sense of what He's doing. And all along, he's going, <coughs> sit down and shut up. <laughs> I told Sandy, I was, uh, when we got into the discussion about the heart and what they were going to do and all, I said, uh, I said, I feel like changing my name to Joe. And she said, don't, because his wife dies. <laughs> I said, yeah, the dogs aren't feeling too good either, you know. So, um, I, I left that alone. <coughs> um, when you hear, um, when you hear somebody say to you, You're in real serious condition. Your heart is not working. And we can't fix it. It makes you go, <clears throat> okay. And the illustration that best described what they were talking about with the heart was they said, the heart muscle does like this. Yours is doing this. And that's it. Okay. And the one doctor said, I'm not going to try to do a bypass or stent <clears throat> because I'll have to tell your wife that she, that you died on the table if I did it. And so we were left to pray about that. And um, that night, um, the doctor came in and said that. <clears throat> There wasn't really anything they could do, even with the 15%, I mean, the, the, the artery that was 15% blocked, they still weren't going to be able to do anything. So at best, the heart was, muscle was going to operate at 20%. And uh, so Sandy and I both questioned, uh, after they le left, we, we thought, well, why can't they stint that, you know? 
And the next day, a new doctor came in, and he began to tell us about the procedure. <clears throat> and I said, I didn't think they would do that. And he goes, no, I'm here to tell you I'm going to do that. We're going to stint the 15%, and we're, uh, uh, 75%, we're going to get it going, and the blood's going to flow. And um, we, we're, we're just going to believe that God's going to do something there. And so, um, it's great having a Christian cardiologist. Amen. 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 You know. And uh, so, we went ahead and did that. And so, we'll know in a couple of weeks, they've they got to do some more tests, but uh, uh, we don't know the degree that it's been increased. We know one, uh, one artery can't be, nothing can be done with it, and hopefully we pray and something can be done about the other one. But this is what uh, this is what I wanted to. Uh, I didn't know what to say this morning. I didn't. I did. I wanted to speak to you this morning. I wanted to share some stuff, but I didn't know really what to say. Um, and I, I always warned you that one day that would come. <laughs> Remember, I always said one day it's going to come, and I'm not going to know what to say. But good, good morning. Uh, let's. Pray and go into communion. No. <laughs> Not an accident that, that that we began this year talking about courage. I said to the nurse, oh by the way, the the nurse, Miss Connie, the nurse we had there. <coughs> when everything started to fall apart. She was a Christian, dynamic Christian lady, a simple God lady, a powerful praying lady. I mean, she just refused to accept anything other than God was going to bring around a miracle. Now, that's, that's the kind of nurse you want around you, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> and her and her and Sandy, and I, I kind of go off into my little world and I'd wake up and they'd be having church uh, when I get back. and. Uh, But I felt like God was saying, okay, can you practice what you preach? And the answer was no, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <clears throat> because I don't believe God's done with me yet. I don't think he's through with, the, with me yet. I don't think he's through with what we've got to do yet. But I, I've got to learn to operate under some different guidelines. But nevertheless, he ain't finished with me yet. Yeah. As, they were, as the song was being sung this morning, the scripture came to me. From Isaiah 41, Isaiah 40, I'm sorry. Verse 27 begins, Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my ways are hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired and weary in his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power to the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Praise be to God. <laughs> His ways we can understand. We try to figure out how we can plug into God. And we try to understand it 
Is this real or are we just playing? Is, is the things that we feel, are they in reality what God is bringing about to work in our lives? One of the things that uh, has been a mainstay for me and for Sandy and for many of us here is we, we have said for years, we're not doing church. We don't want to do church. There are enough churches doing church. We want to do Jesus. We want to unleash the power that is there so that all people can lay hold to it. That that power is not only for just some, but it is for all who can seek the courage to reach out and to lay hold to God and to say, no matter what comes, yes to God. No matter what comes our way, <coughs> I have uh, been uh, recliner bound. <coughs> and uh, just by the nature of being there, watching all the foolishness uh, in the political system going on. Now you knew I was going to say something about this. <laughs> there, there was no way I was going to let this go, right? I mean, I mean I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, I got a heart that's barely working. And you idiots don't have hearts working at all. <laughs> I vote to no to everybody and yes to Jesus. That's where I'm going with it. Amen. That's whose side I'm on. You know, I'm, I'm voting yes to Jesus. You know, if you can't vote yes to Jesus, then go on, go on about your business. God is not through with us yet. We come to the place of understanding that on the day, on days like day, Palm Sunday. The story around, we all know the story around Palm Sunday. It was going to be the one day when try as hard as mankind could try, he was going to try to stop the glory that was given to Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming from Jericho and he's making his way up through Bethpage and he's making his way and he's going to Jerusalem. <coughs> and somewhere in the line of things, someone said, you know what? Let's make it a parade. Let's, let's get him a donkey. No, let's get him a cult of a donkey. We'll put him on that. And we'll usher him into Jerusalem. And we will declare him king. And we will declare him Hosanna in the highest. And so it, it sort of picks up steam and it gets, and as they come over the hill and the boy Jerusalem appears and <clears throat> pretty soon they're, they're laying palm fronds down and they're laying coats down and they're laying blankets down and pretty soon the, the whole thing is turned into a parade. Uh, I'm glad it happened then and not now because there'd be some group trying to stop that from happening today, you know. <coughs> which, is, which is really a, a prophetic. Because he did try to stop it. There was an anti-Jesus group that, that was trying to stop, you know, And as they came up over the hill and came toward Jerusalem, <clears throat> the Pharisees said, 
Teacher, stop your people from this nonsense. Stop them from this cheering. And Jesus looks at him and says, <coughs> if they're quiet, the rocks themselves will cry out. Jesus' way of saying, today's happening. And ain't nothing you can do about it. You can think you can stop this, but you can't stop this. This is so much bigger than any of us. Today I will have my day of recognition. And so he proceeds on. And the singing and the declaration and he will get to the edge of Jerusalem. And he will say to Jerusalem, if only you had recognized this time. But you didn't. And because of that, there will be a day when there won't be a stone left upon a stone. When every stone will be destroyed. I would have gathered you in as if I could, but you would not do it. <clears throat> and so he would make his way to the temple. And <clears throat> he would overturn the temple tables, the money changers. So what started out as a simple day of praise and honor turned into a day of reckoning of the sinfulness of man's own heart. What he interject. But one of the things that I found out, God has a way of working things out so that his glory and his honor and his praise is the thing that is exalted above everything else. I said to Sandy that there was a, a point where I was scared. I was literally scared. Because I said, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if my body will let me do this anymore. So I think maybe I should quit. Maybe I should just retire. Let some younger guy come along. Maybe I've done all I can do. So part of me feels like I can't do this anymore.
God didn't call me to do this because it was easy. He called me to do this because He gave me the gift and talents to do it. Now, I don't know what to, it looks like. I don't know what it's going to look like. Everybody says, take it easy. Okay. Okay. I want to keep doing this as long as I can. I want to do this until God calls me home. I have a wife that, for whatever reason, believes in me, who has no reason to, but she does.
I thank you, Sandy, for all the work that you've done. Now, we've got some challenges ahead of us, but that is nothing new for us. In the coming weeks, we're going to focus on some different things. But right now, today, today is just a hallelujah. Amen. Today is just a hallelujah. <laughs> that this church family is healthy and well. And that God has richly blessed us beyond anything we can imagine. Amen. 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 Praise to One of the things that uh, just kept being uh, reinforced in my spirit was how awesome God was. And I, I'm going to stand there, just how awesome He is. So we're going to come to this decision time. And if you need to uh, just reaffirm in your spirit how awesome God is, give Him praise for that. If you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the first thing you need to do. <clears throat> the one thing that uh, I felt good about when he said, you're in real bad shape. You're in serious condition. <laughs> the one thing that I thought about is, well, at least I'm in good hands. Because greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. So won't you just stand in agreement with me as we sing in this hymn of decision. Won't you just acknowledge to God and say, thank you, Father, for being the God that you are, the God that you always were, and the God that you're going to be. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need someone to pray with you, we'll be here, standing right here.